सह वीर करवाहजस्वीनावधी तमस्तु मिषा वह ओ शांति 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 हरिओम इन गुड इवनिंग वन सेकेंड टू ऑल ऑफ यू वी हैव ट्रैवल्ड इन अवर हरिओम वी हैव ट्रैवल्ड इन अवर journey with understanding our life through the lens of geeta now in the last i don't know when i, remember, I don't remember the date when i started but uh, in this journey as we progressed we understood what are those qualities what are the, what are those uh, thoughts what are those uh, mental adjustments that we need to do to become better correct now it is also important to know what we are so if i were to ask ourselves a question all of us me included everybody if i were to ask ourselves a question where do i stand where do we stand so that question is actually a very pertinent question because we will want to know what is the mirror in which i am able to see myself when we uh, understood about the purushottama the purushottama yoga when we discussed we discussed that changeless principle and we said that the changeless is like that anvil anvil is what the one the mochi uses one iron thing no on which he does uh, his uh, repair of the uh, whatever that is called the anvil and on which the changing which is in case instead of the mochi let us say we are talking about the stone used by the goldsmith the changing which is the jewelry the jewelry which is kept by the gold which is kept by the goldsmith on top of that anvil and it is hit by the effort of the goldsmith with that small hammer and it creates beautifully new jewelry now the anvil in our case in our life is the supreme principle which is changeless constantly there it doesn't change from birth to death and even thereafter supreme is the same the life principle is the same what is the changing that hits that supreme the changing is our mental apparatus our imprints our tendencies our vasanas that is what is hitting that supreme and how is it that we are able to make something good out of that by our discriminative intellect which is the goldsmith with that hammer that is the effort which is required so with the discriminative intellect that we have on the mental apparatus which is what we have placed on the supreme principle which is the never changing on that that self effort is the one which determines the progress we all make now when we dealt with the review session which we had last time in which all oh, beautiful uh, questions you all of you asked and really uh, appreciate all of you for thinking about it so while dealing with the review, uh, review session we also discuss one point that is the fear of being judged what others will think about me in what i do so which means that we are concerned how others view the quality of our thoughts and our actions so we await validation from outside about how we perform and where do we perform from we perform from inside us so we are waiting for a validation from outside about how we perform from inside us so it is really a paradox so we also understood about how time available is the same for everyone it doesn't change the 24 hours not 1 millisecond less not 1 millisecond more so then why is it that some people are satisfied and some people are not satisfied why is it that my mind gets locked in some situations and i am unable to work out the best solutions it gets sort of mind locked correct how is it that we ourselves oscillate between good and evil tendencies within us at each time we discuss that also that at some time it is this quality at some time it is the other quality mind oscillates between this how do i know if my mindset is negative or positive it's important for me to know so what is it that prevents me from learning the negativity itself within myself this obviously is a question for all of us isn't it so let us take this i am not going to give the answer for this because the answer comes towards the end but these are the things that will change us uh, challenges so i am now going to play verse 1 to 12 of chapter 16 which is what we are starting with today adha 
Now, when we see the world in action, and when I mean world in action, people in the world, the way they are acting. You are there, I am there, so many people are there. Now, there are three types of people who act in the world. There are those devatas, devata kind of people, devata kind of people, not somebody who is above the sky. People who are decent, who are divine, who are progressive, who care, who work for the benefit of the others, who are unselfish, they are called the devatas. Sometimes, no, marginally, sometimes we are like that, you know, we care for others, sometimes we are progressive, little time. But there are a lot of other people who are there like that, always, we come across them. Some very learned people, some very uh, people in a good, uh, you know, high position, not like in terms of money, in a position where you are come across them and then you feel that, you know, they are very respectable, they are very respectful, you know, there's such kind of people, we come across them. And then there are some people who are asuras, asuras meaning they act aggressively, they act sometimes uncaringly, they act selfishly, most of the time that is how we work, most of the time I mean, sometimes we go like that. Most of the time it is like this. And there are the Rakshasas. Rakshasas who are absolutely devilish. Their only thing is their arrogance and their ego, nothing else. When I look at the word Rakshasa, the opposite of Rakshasa is Sakshara. Sakshara means if you were to look at it inverted mean Sakshara. Sakshara means Sa Akshara. Akshara is that which is Abhyasa, learning. And Sa Akshara meaning those who are educated, learned people. Now, when such people behave in a manner contrary to the way they have learnt, to the way they have cultured themselves, they become Rakshasas. We become Rakshasas sometimes. When we act contrary to the way we have learnt, the way we have cultivated our, ourselves. So, knowingly, such a person, knowingly, such a person stays away from divinity because of his arrogance, because of his ego. He is called a Rakshasa. So, there are three types of people. And we, very, very small times, we are like a devata. 
most of the time we are asuric in our nature and sometimes we are rakshasi in our nature this is the way we work so the rakshasas they consider it their privilege to live like ravana who is ravana the fellow who uh, had a battle with rama isn't it they are not satisfied with anything they want more and more he had everything he had a kingdom he had a good family everything was there he wanted another man's wife which brought her into his own kingdom his own rule so they want more and more they let others work where they will enjoy the effort of the others such people are there isn't it in companies also there are such people mujhe kya kaam karna hai hey tera kaam hai lekin mujhe result chahiye i will not bother about work in society they believe that in society everything that is available is just for me like others too others also enjoy it is available for me to enjoy why should i have to contribute anything to increase public availability whether it is knowledge whether it is money whether it is any facility whether it is any goodness why should i contribute it is there it is for me to enjoy so my effort is to only earn my bread what i am a two square meals a day whatever it is that i want protect my family it is for society to provide for my joys why should i engage in charity why should i engage in auspiciousness auspicious, uh, auspiciousness why should i engage in goodness such kind of an attitude their only thing is that mujhe kuch nahi pata mujhe jo chahiye wo milna chahiye and the song that comes to my mind is na bevi na bachcha na baap bada na maiya the whole thing is that ke bhaiya sabse bada rupaiya that's all they are concerned about it mujhe kya milne wala hai now let us also see first how do these devatas the first lot how do these people think and behave it is important to know that and then we will understand how we behave so we will first learn how they think they behave and analyze for ourselves whether we have those qualities to qualify for being called good people we see now i am good person i am a good person let us talk about those qualities am i fearless fearless in the sense that any situation that comes to my way i am not going to be afraid of the situation i am ready to face that challenge square on do i have purity in my heart purity in the sense that when i think i must be absolutely clear i should not be harmful to others i should not do contrary to that which is the goodness of mankind that's the way i must do i have purity in my heart am i established in knowledge so my knowledge i am firm and established in that knowledge do i engage in charity charity meaning giving because the greatest act of love is giving am i engaging myself in that giving am i able to control my mind easily that whenever any disturbance comes i am in a position to come back to a sense of balance easily do i engage in the study about my own self i study about science i study about history i study about language do i study about myself am i austere austere meaning that do i stay away from temptations temptations can hit me from anywhere need not necessarily be in you know any it could be a simple thing that you know if my doctor has told me that i must not have fried stuff the moment i look at something fried locked i want to do that do i stay away from that temptation am i straight forward in my dealings whatever it is i'll be in a position to say that straightly do i practice non injury non injury meaning even when i cause an injury to somebody for example i may get angry with somebody but i do it out of love to bring the other person to good mental or physical health so i can cause a mental injury i for example i scold my child i scold my child for something wrong that the child has done but it is out of love that the child must learn that is good what is good for the child that is it. that is non injury do i practice truthfulness that i am very truthful in what i am doing am i able to stay away from anger that leads to rage i can get angry for my child you know i get angry don't do that angry but don't do that bang 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 20 hits on the child's face rage because child did something which i did not like anger to bring him back to senses but rage fatta char paanch aur de do that is it that destroys my peace and destroys the other's peace my child's peace also an ability to renounce that which is harmful that which is dangerous ability to renounce that i have no crookedness which means i come back to what i'm saying i'm straight forward i have no crookedness in the way i think i am kind and compassionate to all living beings 
am I, am I like that? We see a lot of people very kind, very compassionate to a cat, to a dog. The moment they, the moment they reach the house and they see the wife, what are you? All the kind of rage will come on their head. So am I kind and compassionate to all living beings? Am I non-covetous? Non-covetous meaning, dusre ka mal mujhe chahi. Wo nahi hai na. I am not like that. Am I humble? Am I modest? Whatever it is, you may praise me. Thank you very much. Modest, it is all his doing. Humble, I didn't do anything. It is only I am only a conduit for my knowledge that I am sharing with you. Non-fickle in mind. Fickle meaning, abhi ye karna hai, ye karega. Nain, nain, idhar karega. Nain, 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 nain. This fickleness is not there. Forgiving, somebody does some harm to you. Are you in a position to get over it? Forgive. Am I clean? Clean in the sense, in everything that I do, my surroundings, my, my bag, my pen, my computer, my specs, my clothes, my, uh, my table, that cleanliness, is it there in the way I perform? And do I not have hatred for other people? I am not boastful about myself. Do we practice these qualities which we hold as valuable in our life? Do we practice these qualities for ourselves and for others also? This is what we need to do when we look at who are those devatas. But we are not like that. We are mostly mediocre in the way we think, the way we act. We are mostly mediocre. And our mediocrity is best seen by our vanity. Vanity. Correct? We are vainful about what is it that we have. We are boastful. We are boastful. Like you know, I went there and got him, I got my president, I got him, 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 I got him. We are arrogant about our position. I am the CEO of my company. What do you mean? I work under 5,000 people. Correct? Self-conceit. Conceited, this is all the one quality leads to the other. Self-conceit. And I am by rage, my rot at the desire which I have, if it is lost. Like for example, I want the result. And that result is not forthcoming because of, let's say, something happened in the company, my subordinates are, perform, are not performing. I lose my head like anything. I yell at them. I make, insult them. That wrath comes in because my desire is lost. So because of that, I become harsh in my speech. So our mediocrity is because of our ignorance. First and foremost, we need to understand it is our ignorance. Ignorance about what is it that the quality I should develop. The Rakshasik comes as a, in the form of an action. At the first instance, it is about my ignorance. But I need not necessarily be called like a Ravana, not Rakshasik, but definitely Asurik. That I am selfish, I am conceited, I am only concerned, uncaring about other people. So, Sura means angel. A Sura, somebody not an angel. So which means I am not a Devata. Like if I were to look at that categorization, I am not a Devata. I need not necessarily be a Rakshasa, but I am not like that. So I understand that my tuning is probably very, very fine. We have a false illusion about ourselves. I am I am False illusion about ourselves. Seemingly, we think that we know everything and that we are pure. But actually, we are ready to practice any of these negativities at the slightest pretext. We are ready. Because anger is there waiting. Because desire loss, I cannot tolerate. How is it that somebody does not know about me? I have to talk about that myself. I have to make myself big. So these are the things that come to you. So when we speak, uh, seek spiritual unfoldment, that's what we are under, uh, engaging in all this uh, last so many sessions. What we are trying to do is spiritual unfoldment. Which means we have to direct our mind and intellect to pursue goodness in the world. This is the Daivik qualities that we are talking about. Once we are able to do that, spiritual unfoldment becomes very easy. Because once the qualities are developed for us to improve, that qualities will help us towards that journey in our spirituality very easily. Now, if we are in those Asuri qualities, like you know, selfishness, boastfulness, those kind of things we are there, it will require us to put a little more effort to pursue those divine qualities. So, from where I am, so which means, for example, 
I may have done a lot of good things. When somebody says, Are you doing such a lot of good things? In my mind, not in my speech and action alone, in my mind, I must first and foremost have the humility to say, Okay, yeah, can be like that. Oh, yeah. Mujhe us time laga, inspire hua, maine kar diya. In my mind, in my speech, automatically it will come. What is this? Mujhe pata tha, maine kiya. That's it. That humility comes in. Are you, even if you have done some great achievement, be modest. Are you, there are still more things to be done. That will come gradually. So that effort is required. Once that effort is uh, taken and then we reach that daivi qualities, then the entry into the spiritual world is smoother and easier. The very fact that we are all discussing this knowledge for the last oh, 35 sessions, we have been discussing this knowledge, 35 weeks, we've been, this has been going on, is proof that we are capable of moving from our limitations. We are capable of moving from our negativity with a little attention and with a little effort, our mind will walk away from negativity. So, we are at the moment what is happening. Our negativity is compelled by our bundle of desires. Our negativity is compelled by what is it, our preconceived notions. And we are running away from the really good qualities that we need to cultivate because we have habituated to this. So the song that comes to my mind is Teri Dunya Se Hoke Majboor Chala Main Bohat Dur Bohat Dur Bohat Dur Chala Teri Dunya Se so from that world of divine qualities, from that world where spirituality becomes my easy entry, I have moved away and I have cultivated under my compulsion of my desires, compulsion of what is it that I hold dear to me. From there, I have moved away from that divinity. So please allow me to enter back. Now, when we were in, I think, chapter 3, we had a case of Arjuna asking a question that, my dear, TK, you are very knowledgeable, Krishna, you are very knowledgeable, you are my friend, or oh, relative, everything is fine. But you tell me what is the path that I should follow because chapter 2 was a huge ocean of many multiple instructions. If you remember, I said chapter 2 was all about an entire summary of the Gita itself. So in the beginning of chapter 3, he says, you tell me one path, no? Why are you making confusing me? I am going to Tell me one path. At that time, there is a reply of uh, Krishna which says, Lokesmin dhuvida nishtha pura prokta mayanaga. We had uh, read that when we dealt with chapter 3. What is this? There are two kinds of people in the world. That is, those who pursue knowledge and those who pursue action. There are two kinds of people. Now, here we are talking about two kinds of people. The daivic type of people and the asuric type of people. Now, the daivic type are those, as I said, established in goodness. And asuric type are those who are striving to be better, like you and me. Striving to be better. We have our limitations. We have our prejudices. We have our ignorance. Accept it. With our self-effort, we can climb these limitations. Like, for example, I am going out, like uh, when I go out for, let's say, a class. Now, I look at my face in the mirror. It's a little oily. Correct? I will wash my face, put some soap and then tidy it up before I go so that it does not oil you. In ladies case, when they see their face on the mirror and then they have to go for a par party, oh, 15 minutes earlier, half an hour earlier, they will start. Clean your face with moisturizer or something like that. Put some cream, put some sort of covering so that you look better than what you look in the mirror. You should look better than what you look in the mirror. On the mirror, what you are looking is the way you are at the moment. To make yourself bef better then what you are looking in the mirror at the initial stage is the effort that you put in. Correct? Now, how you look in the mirror is how others look at you. Isn't it? This is more so about our mind. Face, we can do whatever adjustment we want to do. Oil nikal diya, face wash kiya, sab chalega, we can go. But what about my mind? When I speak, when I interact, the others will look at me and that is the mirror that actually I am facing. 
so adjust yourself like how the mirror of your observant mind shows you to be so you have to be observant about what you are your mind must be in a position to understand oh anger has come the moment you are able to pause and say anger has come anger will go away because what you are doing is you are not giving power to anger you see another person's car you have a wonderful car very efficiently working perfectly useful to you fine and you saw another person's car you don't have the money to buy that car you saw another person's car mere ko bhi wo gaadi lena chahiye then immediately the thought must come that if i buy the car i have to take in loan the emi will be so much my income will not be sufficient to bear that i will be depriving my family of some income etc something etc so it is better that i don't think of it so which means that coveting something else that somebody else has knowing that i don't have the ability at this moment i may get, develop an ability later at this moment that is ensuring that i don't put me or my family in harm's way that is the way you should be observant about your mind now morality is something which is known to all of us what is immoral what is moral nobody taught us we have seen life unfold across the world and we have seen what pe- people should do what people should not do and we are very very conscious about morality when it comes to other people we are very conscious about that usko hi nahi karna chahiye tha galat baat hai and we do something similar to that we don't even put a mirror to our face to see i did it that is our problem so we also know what we should do and what we should not do but we compromise because of our pre existing imprints our tendencies are there our vasanas are there because of those pre existing imprints we compromise again and again we compromise after compromising we think are what happened to me why did i do it but you do it so the imprint correction is that effort that is required and then imprint correction by, uh, comes by the first time you don't fall a prey to that immorality the first time second time the power of that to consume you will be reduced third time still lesser fourth time still lesser gradually its power on you will reduce that is why because we are unable to control it we end up becoming asuric in the behavior we lose our own discriminative power and we don't have the courage to move away from immorality immorality and maintain morality in our actions so even when discrimination comes sometimes discrimination does come but we fall prey to our old habits our old temptations so that corrective process comes by the first time the first time we decide to stay away from it that time correction happens second time still lesser third time still lesser fourth time still lesser the power of our imprints to consume our own sense of right and wrong will get reduced by this constant practice so what about these asuric tendencies people what is it you know many of us may have that at many times some people have that at, you know always in a mind it has got the mindset that believes that this world itself is nothing but an accident ye duniya hi bas aise hi ban gaya kya walon kaise ban gaya ban gaya nothing in this world is permanent we know because we say that every time we know kuch bhi permanent nahi hai na changeless is the only one we hear that so their understanding of nothing is permanent is nothing is permanent so there is no controller or regulator in this world at all that is the belief who is there to regulate me mujhe jo chahiye main karunga everything that is happening is either by chance or by luck mera naseeb hai hua mera naseeb kharab hai nahi hua correct so all life situations are seen as either unjust if it doesn't come to me or accident if it comes to me or if it doesn't come to me or it, it is seen as an accident there is actually no purpose for such people there is no life purpose to hold on to and such people believe that everything happens because of a mutual need tumko chahiye maine kiya mujhe chahiye tum karo and it is basically dhanda that is the way they believe so we ourselves are looked upon as a by product of our desires it is my desire which is uh, making me do what i am doing your desire which, which is making you do what you are doing so in that kind of a scenario when you look at it i will see that even my birth is a result of 
lust between my parents. It is an accident. I should not have been born itself. That kind of a thinking also will come about. Because you are, there is nothing to hold on to. There is no value, there is no value system at all to hold on, hold on to. We come across such people at every corner in our life. We wonder actually how they can be so successful. They are so happy. How is it that it is possible for them? In that mindset, that is, they are this bundle of negativity. They are this bundle of um, as asuri qualities. We are able to see. Then how is it that they are so successful? Apparently, they seem to have a lot of money. Apparently, they have a lot of positions. Apparently, they have a you know, good family. Apparently, they have a lot of friends, etc. This is how we see it. But actually, when you go near, such kind of people are not even wanted by their own family and friends. Because they, even their own family and friends see them. These kind of things that when we think about others, do we look at ourselves? Are we also behaving like that many times? So, yet some of us believe that if I, they can be successful like this. I can also be successful. I can also be happy. I think I am wrong in pursuing this kind of morality. I don't think I need to do that. This happens to many of us, right? So I might as well be like them. At least I will be happy like them. This thought comes to my mind. We end up becoming Asuras. So I want to build my good qualities. I see some others doing this immoral things, whatever it is. My mind gets attracted because of the old habit patterns, because of the old temptations, because of my past imprints. And I think that that is right, knowing full well that I am moving into this journey and it is going to make me better. I fall a prey to become an Asura. So, those who pursue only desires can never be satisfied. If I say that I want, okay, by the age of 40, I want to have 1 crore as my savings, 40, okay, at the age of 40, my savings is 1 crore 20 lakhs, should I be happy, I should be very happy, isn't it, no, 120, but the cost of living has increased, inflation has increased, 1 crore crore, in the next 5-6 years, 46, 47, you get 2 crore 50 lakhs, savings, now, भी मेरा बच्चा बड़ा हो गया उसका शादी करने का है उसके बच्चे होंगे उनके लिए भी कुछ ना कुछ प्रोवाइड करना पड़ेगा आई अनदर 1 करोड़ मोर लाइक दिस लाइक दिस डिजायर्स बिकम आई वांट प्लस 1 आई वांट प्लस 1 समथिंग मोर समथिंग मोर इज रिक्वायर्ड दे एक्चुअली वी बिकम हिपोक्रिटिकल वी बिकम हिपोक्रिटिकल वी बिकम अरोगेंट वी बिकम प्राउड वी स्टार्ट फ्लॉन्टिंग मेरे पास अभी 3 करोड़ रुपए सेविंग्स है smart That arrogance comes in. So we are holding on to false ideas. And what does happen? What happens after that? It leads to our own sadness. It leads to our own suffering. But yet what happens? We keep on asking for more. Within ourselves we are sad. Within ourselves we are suffering. Because if we are not sad, if we are not feeling incomplete, if we are not feeling that you know there is something more which will make uh, add a value to my life. Why should I run after that plus one? If 40, my target was met, am I contented? No. Plus one. At 47, I got what I wanted. Am I contented? No. Plus one. Then automatically I am suffering, no? I am suffering from a disease called plus one. That is my suffering. So we keep on asking for more and more. And more and more, that reminds me of a <laughs> song. Again, a Kishore Kumar song. दे दे प्यार दे प्यार दे प्यार दे रे हमें प्यार दे जितना भी तू दे मुझे और चाहिए जितना भी तू दे मुझे और चाहिए this is the mentality so now we will go ahead with uh, verse 13 to 24 of chapter 16 and then we will take it forward from there Idamastiramati me bhavishyati punadhanam Asau maya hatashatru hanishyaja paralapi 
We come across many, this example what I gave a little while earlier, we come across many of these you know, filthy rich people, very big, uh, bada industrialist, hai. Forbes 500, Forbes 100, Fortune 500, these kind of things we come across, correct? Now, they have success with something. Obviously, they multiply, that is how they became uh, so big. They have success with something. And having succeeded with that something, they got some benefits out of that. Did they satisfy themselves with that? Next target is to get that which they don't have. So I set up a plan. I said I will want to set up a plan for manufacturing garments. I set up a fact, uh, garment factory. Set it up, became big. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. When it was succeeding, I said, no, I must set up a I must set up a yarn manufacturing unit. Because the garments will need the yarn. Okay. I'll start manufacturing the yarn. That also became successful. Oh, yarn comes from uh, some uh, base material. Cotton, some cases, in some cases, it is polyester. I will start manufacturing that. Okay. Now that comes from still a base material, polyester, comes from oil. So I will start engaging in oil. I am talking about reliance. This is how they grew. When we came, when we were in college and all, it was only Vimal. Now, from only Vimal, it went on and went on and went on and went on. And today, it's a big company. Correct? Now, similarly, when I get something, I don't have a satisfaction. I wanted something more. So, I build a new Sankalpa. Ye bhi karne ka. I want more. I want something more. Now, in trying to do that, going back to the earlier example, even if something illegal or immoral is to be done, I am ready to do. Correct? Reliance example is a good example for you to understand that, isn't it? So, in trying to achieve that something more, even if there is something immoral or illegal, I will do that. Just because I want, I want, I want, that I want attitude, this endless cycle keeps me stressed. 
because in that want i become stressed i may be filthy rich i may be doing a lot of things yet i am stressed because i have created that plus one in my mind and that plus one keeps me agitated always this is what happens so in any field of work we are engaged in whatever be the field of work we are doing we want to be superior and because we want to be superior everybody else is seen as a competitor we want to defeat that competition once we have defeated that competition we search for other smaller competition big competition i have defeated i want to search for smaller competition and then once i have wiped all of them away then i will be supreme nobody will be there except me mere se bada koi nahi hai so this becomes another asuric nature of mine the desire is that i must be the only enjoyer of everything that is happening in today's context when we look at it at that time we were speaking about reliance in those terms today we are talking about adani in those terms because in every pie i want a share that's the kind of thing we are discussing isn't it i am not being critical but i am talking about factually how that compares with the spiritual way of life now our vanity in that case makes us feel that we are the best among everyone correct because i am doing it i am become i am the best among everyone that is our vanity then when i give because i am become big, very big no when i give i seek appreciation i seek acknowledgement from the world for what my greatness mere se bada koi nahi hai for my greatness i want appreciation i want acknowledgement every act is nothing but an act of self enlargement or self congratulation ha ah. correct not set at self improvement in time what happens this also leads to stress this also leads to destruction of my mental apparatus i may not lose money but this leads to stress so we create unnecessary fears and anxieties once we reach that stage so then we start imagining multiple fancied sorrows that happens to us even today without much we are normal middle class people we are all fine yet today also it happens we are victims of creating unnecessary fears unnecessary anxieties we have multiple fancied sorrows fancy imaginary sorrows we have imaginary problems ye hoga to kya hoga are wo aisa ho jayega to kya hoga you start thinking about some problems or the other even before they have come this becomes our habit and we get entangled in a net of delusory troubles trouble is still not come in our mind those troubles have started picturing picturing itself remember what i said right in the beginning in the first uh, probably five ten sessions i said that nothing that occurs in my life is something which has already not occurred in my mind so when we start creating these imaginary problems in our mind when we start getting entangled in this kind of delusory troubles they will become a reality because my action also will be in that nature isn't it so we get tied we tie ourselves by ourselves our mind we tie with our own mind and we imagine the misery is created by us nobody else created it we created it now we can one example that i can give you is during this covid many people got panic they got panic even now when the uh, some cases are increasing people are actually panicking but some people remain balanced theek hai if this has to come to me it will come and it has got a cycle of correction it has got a cycle of correction it will go away why should i worry everybody in the world is likely to get it why should i bother so once you develop that attitude it is also possible sometimes you may not get it or you may have got it and it may have gone away also and you don't know about it because you never allowed that fear that anxiety to trouble you i am one such case i don't know whether we got it and it went away we got it or not i have absolutely no clue because i never allowed that fear to get on to my nerves and similarly with my family they never allowed that fear to get on to them yeah care is one thing but not fear not anxiety in that fear in that anxiety we are unable to think clearly and we become perfect candidates for psychiatry dimag ka santulan bigad gaya so we become perfect candidates for psychiatry and then they slip and fall into a hell of their own miseries it is not a hell created in some geography somewhere else oh upar hai kya aasman ke upar hai narak no narak 
created by us in our own mind and we fall into hell created by us in our own mind in our, in urdu they say allah ka kaam karoge to jannat jaoge paradise has anybody seen that paradise otherwise what will happen the jallad who's here the executioner he will come and kill you are who why are you creating these imaginary troubles first and foremost understand that doing good there is nothing bigger than that doing good for yourself doing good for others around you there is nothing bigger than that uske baad mein the heaven or hell is what is happening inside your own mind you don't have to find a geography to do that so our self conceit sometimes because we don't know our ignorance we become conceited and our self conceit makes us believe that we know everything mere ko to sab pata hai we are vainful about our wealth our position you know we start thinking that i am the best among everyone mere jaisa koi nahi hai all these only to announce to the world we want to tell everybody are maine aisa kiya maine aisa kiya main ye kar raha hu wo kar raha hu in fact in, it happened with me a few days ago somebody asked me uh, at a rotary meeting it was actually uh, somebody i met for the first time she asked me what is it that you do i became tongue tied there are lot of things i do i became tongue tied because i didn't know to say what i was doing because what i am doing i am doing i don't i didn't feel like announcing it although if you look at it a purely marketing perspective i should be talking you know i am doing this i am doing that you know i am such a big thing i am doing not required what i am doing is giving me happiness what i am doing is giving me satisfaction so that is there there is nothing to announce so when we start announcing like that even though i have so many things etc and then we start announcing deep within we know our own emptiness because we know khokle hain but unfortunately despite all these things being available we cannot admit that i am empty within myself and because of that it leads to sorrows in our own mind we stay suffering inside unable to accept it outside that is our nature so this imaginary greatness to sing our own self glories this ostentation this has becomes our nature so the song that comes to my mind is अरे दीवानो मुझे पहचानो कहा से आया मैं हूं कौन मैं हूं डॉन मैं हूं डॉन मैं हूं मैं हूं मैं हूं डॉन इफ आई एम डॉन समबडी एल्स मस्ट टेल मी आई शुड नॉट से आई एम डॉन करेक्ट दैट इज द वे इट शुड बी नाउ इन द लास्ट रिव्यू सेशन दैट वी हैड सम क्वेश्चंस वर आस्क्ड अबाउट रीबर्थ वेदर बिफोर रीबर्थ आई विल एंटर हेल or heaven depending on whatever i perform and then whether i will stay there for some time and then i will return this question was also there one of those questions which, which asked which was asked last time now on the basis of my repeated choices that i make as i said earlier repeated choices is that i want to be ostentatious i want to be boastful i want to be, even though i am empty within i will keep repeating my presence in the same surrounding so what is the choice i make now i will keep repeating myself in the same surroundings again you have chosen to attend every saturday or watch this video later i have chosen to speak every saturday repeatedly we keep on coming in the same field of action so unless i decide consciously to stay away from going to a bar at 6 o'clock every evening remember my example old example and the side said consciously that i will not go to the bar every evening at 6 o'clock i can never get away from being a drunkard if i go to the bar every evening at 6 o'clock i am a perfect drunkard but unless i by choice stay away from it i cannot become a non drunkard so so long as i keep on choosing the same i will keep coming in similar surroundings my surroundings will be determined by my own choices so rebirth also is my own choice depending on what i have chosen the hell or heaven will be what i suffer or why i enjoy exactly on the basis of my choices so when i consciously stay away from those negativities i come to better surroundings so i leave my self created hell and reach my own inner heaven by my own choice there are actually three doors to enter hell three doors to enter hell because entry to hell is very very popular entry to heaven is not so popular because people don't go there it's not a nice 
holiday destination. Hell is a very popular holiday destination. A lot of people want to go there. Because there are three entrances. Heaven probably may have only one. I don't know. But I'll find out and tell you. If I go there, I will tell you. Now, the three entries are from desire. Desire which leads to 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. It becomes lust. That is one entry. Anger. Anger meaning not anger. That child, rot, rage, that kind of an anger. Greed. Greed is, I got one. One more. Oh, one more. Oh, one more. This attitude of mine starts creating that quality within me. Now, where once I enter hell through any of these doors, we can destroy our own inner peace. Now, if you remember in my earlier sessions, I used to uh, use this uh, phrase called Vita Raga Bhaya Krodha. You remember that? Vita, drop. What? Raga, attachment. Attachment is I plus I want. Attachment. Raga, Bhaya, fear. Fear meaning I got something and I am fearful that I will lose it. Or I did not get something and I am fearful that I will not get it. Attachment is not likely to result in... Uh, Fulfillment or having fulfilled, I am likely to lose it. And Krodha, anger. Because I am going either lost or that frustration at not gaining it, I become angry at that which is preventing me from uh, getting it. So this is what is being now mentioned here also. That you have to drop that. So in if you don't do that, there is no satisfaction. There is no contentment. Having got something, plus plus greed. So, the intelligence lies in our being able to manage our desires. There is an ignorance in us that possessing things, possessing relationships, possessing something which I like makes me complete. Actually, that is wrong. Possessing doesn't make my life complete. My life gets complete when I have an understanding about everything that is happening in my life. That understanding is what makes my life complete. So self-improvement requires us to follow the teachings of realized people. Those who have learned, we must follow their teachings. Read books, watch videos, attend discourses if it is possible. Go to a satsang. Satsang meaning a collective group of people who think good. Because just by seeing them, listening to them, it imbibes a lot into my own system. Any means that suits my mind, I should follow. This process helps our mind to climb above its own limitations and make internal corrections within us. The roadmap for correction is Bhagavad Gita. I am saying Bhagavad Gita because we are discussing Bhagavad Gita. Our Shastras, entire bundle of Shastras is the roadmap for our self-correction. That is what puts us on the right path. Before I wind up, I just want to give you an example. For me. In this context, I want to give an example. Like I have a long, long pending design. Long pending design. That is, I want to go across India and see places of interest. And I want to see those places of interest by train. And I want to do a solo trip. Solo trip because not necessary that whatever I want to do, the way I, way I want to go, where I want to go, my partner also will want to go. Or there will be some friend of mine who will want to go. Not necessary. Because it is, each individual is different, isn't it? This is my uh, desire, as I said. This is my desire. Something which is good one, but I have desired. But I have not, not yet got about implementing it. But if I have to go, how do I? I will first see the train timetable. Because I want to go by train. I will see the train timetable. I will see the maps of the places of my interest. Where are the places I want to go? I will see the maps. Then I will see the timelines of each location when I want to go. What is the weather there? What are the important events there? Is it something interesting for me to go there? Then I will pack minimum of what is required. Only minimum in a backpack because it's a solo trip. I have to pack minimum. I don't need to carry a whole lot of things. Minimum of what is required. I have to make sure that I stay connected to my home because any anytime I need to be connected. Then. I have to keep checking the map whenever there is a doubt about where I am going. I have to keep checking the map. Then I will have to follow directions. Whatever the directions given in the map, 
or ask locals who know the place of uh, for uh, guidance or whatever they will give me some inputs this is right this is wrong whatever it is that is how i will make a sub successful backpacking trip if i plan one similarly if i have to self improve i have to make a u turn and the u turn is to my inner self i have to turn to my within and follow the road map of bhagavad gita for a happier and a peaceful life this is what we need to look at so when i am doing this uh, when i am talking about this backing trip uh, backpacking trip etc the song that comes to my mind with which i will close now today is chala jata hu kisi ki dhun mein dhadakte dil ke tarane liye milan ki masti bhari aankhon mein hazaro sapne suhane liye to chala jata hu with this i will end my session for today again any questions that anybody has most welcome to ask or as i said drop it on whatsapp most welcome very entertaining <laughs> thank you i will wind up om purnamada purnamidam purnat purnam udachyate पूर्णस्य पूर्णमादाय पूर्णमेवावशिष्यते ओम शांति 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 हरि ओम श्री गुरुभ्यो नमः हरि ओम थैंक यू एंड विश यू ऑल अ वेरी नाइस वीकेंड